Film developing and post-processing, for some reason, are things in film photography that often gets neglected. We easily get carried away by this array of film stocks that we're able to choose from. We also talk a lot about gear, but for some reason, developing your film is not something that we talk a lot often. As I started doing more things on film and learning more about film photography, over time, it becomes more clear to me the importance of learning about film developing. You might not be in a position where you want to develop your own film yet, but it's still really important that you have an idea of what to look for in a photo lab. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a brief guide as to the factors that I would consider before choosing a photo lab to send my roles to, and my take on what types of services will work better for what types of purposes. Also, a quick shout out to John, who reached out to me on Instagram asking about precisely what this video is about. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Generally, there are three types of stores that you could develop your roles with. The first type being large chain drug stores or supermarkets, for example, CVS in the US, Asda or Tesco in the UK. So these are stores that don't necessarily specialize in photo equipment and film, but they have this photo department under them that looks after printing photos, film development, and say creating souvenirs or gifts. Another route that you can go down is pro labs, which can be independent or chains. So these are shops that are dedicated to doing film processing. They have their own equipment in store and they hire experienced technicians who actually know a lot about film photography to do the scans and the processing for you. And the last route that you can go down is online photo labs. They don't have a retail facing shop that lets you drop your roles and pay. Instead, what I do is that I get everyone to pay online. You send in your roles. They will defile the roles and return everything to you, including the negatives, and prints or scans depending on what you've ordered. That being said though, most drugstores or supermarkets or even the independent local photo labs do have an option for you to do everything online as well, though the prices might vary because you've also taken into account the delivery fees that will be involved. But overall, these are the three main ways that you can look into if you want to get your roles developed at a lab. The biggest difference between developing your roles at a pro lab versus developing them with a chain store is that you get a personal point of contact. With a pro lab, you can clearly identify who is doing your photos, but with a generic drugstore or supermarket, for many reasons that's not possible. At a drugstore type of photo lab, the staff is actually on rota, so they rotate once in a while. The person who you dropped the film with would not be the person necessarily doing the development, would not necessarily be the one who is returning the film to you and next time you visit a store it's very likely that the people will be different and also a lot of these large retail photo departments inside a supermarket do not do the developing in-house so they will have to send your roles to a third party who does the developing and scanning or printing so the person you're speaking to does not necessarily have an idea as to what actually happened to the film whereas if you process with a pro lab it is almost certainly the case that they're doing everything in-house. You'll also be able to talk to a person that you know is running the store. Having an identifiable member of the staff that you can regularly touch base with has been really beneficial for the purpose of learning about film, in my experience. A large part of learning about film photography involves trial and error, but if you don't have anyone to ask questions about to discuss film photography related stuff with, it makes it really difficult for you to find out whether or not you're on the right track and it's a situation where you don't know what you don't know. Having a personal relationship with a member of the staff is incredibly valuable, especially if you're just starting with film. It's just really helpful for you to have someone that you could go back to and ask about, say, specifically what happens to a set of negatives that you've developed with them or just anything that's generally related to film. I've also created this blog article in which I list out in greater detail what actually happens behind the scenes inside a film store and also the different types of options that's most common and most relevant to most of you in terms of what you can do with your films and how you would want them to be delivered especially for those who are staying in the UK I've also listed out the specific service offerings and the corresponding price for your reference Also another point for people who are more determined 
who have made up their mind that they're gonna, you know, be serious about film photography is that as you start shooting on film more, you would realize that there might be situations where you'd like to deviate from the normal way of doing things. For example, pushing, pulling. You have a style in your mind that you would like your images to reflect. Should this be the case, it would be really important for you to have a person who you know you can rely on, who really knows your style and knows what you're looking for, so that you will be able to get the same results every time. That is important for the purpose of consistency in your work. But let's just backpedal a little. Let's assume that you're just starting out and you're just dabbling, you want to get a feel of what it's like to shoot film. So in that case, you would really want to look at the return time of those photo labs. Most of the photo labs that I've seen around in London, that's where I'm based, are able to deliver the photos or prints within a week. That is the turnaround time for pro labs. Chain stores, on the other hand, are going to take longer, at least that's how they market it themselves. I, frankly speaking, have not developed with a chain store before because I know that for my purposes as a photographer, a pro lab is going to suit my needs well. Larger chain stores, say supermarkets, because they don't do it in-house, they send your films to a contractor and then have them develop your films and then they take it back and then give it back to you. So that is why a longer time is usually involved. The situation is similar with online photo labs because of the delivery time that you have to take account for. Usually you would expect to get your scans or prints back in say two to three weeks. Most of these stores today have an option for you to pay extra if you want your films to be processed faster. For me, photography is a weekly routine thing. I would really appreciate if I could have my photos back in one week or else it's gonna cause some destruction to my work cycle. But obviously this could look very different for you depending on the stage you're at with film photography. Another thing that's related to accessibility is obviously how close by is the film lab to you. As a person who is based in London, this really is not a concern for me. There are many photo labs around the city and the ease of travel also means that I will be able to get to those photo labs reasonably quickly. However, if you stay in a town where there aren't as many photo labs as you wish, and assuming that you are serious about getting into film photography and making it a regular thing for you, I would advise you to choose a lab or a method of developing a films where you can see yourself comfortably repeating this action on a relatively frequent basis. Altogether, the turnaround time and also the location of your lab, the convenience of getting to the lab, will determine how regularly you're able to exercise your muscles in relation to film photography, which ultimately plays a basic but important role in your learning about film photography. Quality, I acknowledge, especially if you're just starting, might not be something that you're most concerned with. Let's say if you're just looking to post some images on social media or if you're just looking to try out what it feels like to shoot on film, maybe the defects or the quality of the negatives might not concern you as much. Though, if you are planning to do film in the long run, then it will be good for you to bear in mind while you're experimenting with film, the type of defects or mistakes that can happen in the process of developing films. And so when a time comes for you to actually print your photos, make sales, enter competitions, you know your stuff, you have managed to find a photo lab that is reliable and knows your style well, the most common type of damage that can happen to a film during the development process is scratches. So scratches look something like this. You can see this both on the negative and also from the resulting image. Other common types of defects would include dust. Now, dust is not something, based on my experience of developing my own films, dust is not something that you can totally eliminate because we live in a world where dust is everywhere. But pro labs might take more action and put more care into cleaning up most of that dust before they scan it or print it for you. In doing so, they drastically lower the chance of dust particles showing up in your scans. Also, do look out for water marks, especially in places like the UK where we use hard water. When water evaporates, they leave behind lime scales. In this case, if the negatives are not dried properly, the lime scale is going to build up on your negative and it's going to be an absolute nightmare to get that removed. When it comes to the quality of negatives, I can't say for sure. 
that a certain lab does a better job than the other because I think the experience can vary from person to person to a very large extent. Sometimes people get lucky, sometimes unfortunate things happen. So here are some general pointers in terms of evaluating the performance of a particular photo lab. Again, it might not be immediately clear as to why this is so important to have your negatives back, though I strongly recommend anyone, like absolutely anyone, to go with a photo lab that is able to return your negatives. Now, negatives are really important for various reasons. The first being that this is a critical piece of the entire photographic process. When you're just starting out with film, especially if you used to shoot digital, it might appear that all that really matters is the film scan. So it's a JPEG file that matters, but not the negative. As I've alluded to in previous videos, the negative is like your raw file in a digital sense, and the JPEG file is the exported version containing your edits on a raw file. If you take the film scan and disregard the negative, what you're really doing is you're deleting the raw file after you've done your edits on one JPEG file. With photos, you just really never know. You might want to create a print out of this image, or you might simply want to come up with another scan. Ideally, if you are to create an image, you would go back to your negative. It's just like if you happen to not like the edits you've done on a JPEG file, you go back to the raw file and tweak the raw file directly instead of tweaking the JPEG file, which is already a compressed form of the image which has lost a great deal of detail. So that alone is a really strong reason why you would need to keep your negatives. Secondly, keeping your negatives is going to benefit your learning. Your negatives contain a great deal of information that would deepen your understanding of film photography. First of all, it tells you what type of film stock that was. This piece of information is key if you ever want to do any sort of comparison between different film stocks, it is also key for you to learn how to read your negatives so that you know what actually happens to firstly the exposure and secondly the development. For instance, there will be a difference between a negative that's correctly exposed and correctly developed versus another one that's underexposed but overdeveloped. These are the kind of things that of course come with experience, but then again, the critical part to learning comes from the negative itself. The reason why I didn't mention price earlier on is because it's not as straightforward. Like you can't really have a meaningful discussion about price without first having considered the factors I've listed above. Different film labs do things differently. So at the same given price, you might be actually getting different things from two different film labs. The only thing that I have to say about prices is that Make sure that when you're doing a comparison between two film labs, you've equalized the different aspects of the services that they're providing. If we're talking about the basic develop and scan options, it's pretty standard, but there are usually a variety of add-ons in relation to the return time, the file size, and stuff like that. So make sure that when you are comparing between the prices, you have factored in all the add-ons that you will need to purchase to make it a fair comparison so that you're not simply choosing the service that appears to be the cheapest but then in fact doesn't actually serve your purpose the best. Film processing to film photos is pretty much like editing to your digital photos. The act of sending your film away and sitting there waiting for your scans tends to lead us to think that film development is a really standard process that would be you know, the same regardless of how you do it, which in fact is very false. I hope that this video is able to give you a basic overview of different options that you have to get your film developed. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!